Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making a delicious Dutch baby pancake that puffs up in the oven. It's sort of like a big popover that you get to share with your friends and family. And I'm going to serve it with a strawberry rhubarb compote. It's going to be divine. So it's super easy to make. The batter's super quick. So in a blender, you can do this in a food processor, you can even do it with a whisk if you want to. Half a cup of all-purpose flour, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, and a half a teaspoon of table salt. And I'm gonna put it right in there and I'm just gonna whirl it around a bit just to get that flour and salt sort of whirled around. This is a loud blender. And then what I'm gonna, woo! And then what I'm gonna add in here is half a cup of room temperature milk, whole milk, all right? Two eggs that are also at room temperature, and that's whole eggs, okay? Two tablespoons of unsalted butter, melted. Oh, and by the way, the most important thing that I didn't say, I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and put a 10 inch cast iron pan in there. And I'm leaving it with a tablespoon of butter in it. It's gonna melt and it's gonna be ready for us to go. All right, because we need lots of steam. So we really need to get this pan hot. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and that is pure vanilla extract. And we're gonna whirl it around again. And we're gonna get it nice and frothy. So loud noise, warp speed. You really wanna get this going for about 30 seconds. You really wanna create some beauty. I'm stopping it for a second because I just wanna make sure all my flowers incorporated. Come on over and take a look. It's getting nice and bubbly. All right, but I just want to get everything incorporated. So I have a little spatula, get right in there. Can you see in there? So we, we still, still see a little flour on the sides, but it looks like a typical pancake batter, but a little bit thinner, almost like a crepe batter. And this is very typical of a popover batter. And if any of you would like me to do a video on popovers, please leave me a message and uh, let me know, because I would love to do one for you. They're so much fun. All right, we're gonna get this, give it a good go around again. And we really want to make the gluten develop. Gluten forms when flour from the wheat plant I can't talk that loud. You win, you're louder. So gluten from the wheat plant or Flour from the wheat plant, like all-purpose flour. See how bubbly? Come over and look one more time. Bubbly, bubbly, this is what we want. See that? Okay, that's our batter. So we want the gluten to form. We wanna actually mix. Mixing creates more gluten and helps these gluten-forming proteins within the flour start developing links to each other. And we want the steam to get stuck in there so the pancake or the Dutch baby goes explosive in the oven. Now I'm going to go get my hot, hot cast iron pan. Remember it's at 375 degrees Fahrenheit and it is hot. Woo! And I got butter in here. Oh, I can smell the butter. And what you're going to do is make sure you remember it's hot. So make sure you put something over it so you know. And I'm going to pour this in here. Okay, you're going to pour the batter right in there. All right. And it goes back in the oven for 20 minutes. 20 glorious minutes and it's gonna very much puff up. All right, now be careful, this is very tricky here. Notice what I did is I took my top rack out of my oven. Make sure you remember, Dutch babies, they expand. All right, and you do not want it to expand on the top rack of your oven because there goes your Dutch baby. So that would not be good. So we're gonna have this ready to go when it comes out of the oven. And we're gonna flip to our strawberry rhubarb compote, which is divine. My daughter loves it to the point where if, I, if, if it's rhubarb season and she doesn't see any in the refrigerator, I have words, I have words. I'm gonna go move this over. 
All right, and now I'm moving my induction hot plate over. And I wanted to go over before we started this. Follow me, it's a working kitchen, what can I say? All right? So I just want to explain the gluten thing again because I didn't quite finish. So if you look at proteins from wheat flour and proteins in general under an electron microscope, they look like curly hair. They look like curly, curly, like a little pig's tail. And as they're heated, they actually relax a little bit. And our gluten, because we have water-based ingredients in with our flour, what do we have? Whole milk. Whole milk has water in it, right? It has fat, but it also has water. Eggs also have water. So water and gluten-forming protein, or proteins in the wheat flour, there's two of them, gliadin and glutenin. There'll be a test at the end of this video. Just joking. They actually create gluten. So when the water mixes with these proteins, they create gluten. And this gluten is stretchy, just like this rubber band. If you overwork it, it actually, you can hardly pull it. But when it's not overworked, now we overworked it a little bit by really blending in that blender because we want to create these cross links with the proteins. And we want steam to form. Steam is what leavens this Dutch baby and popovers in general. They're steam leavened. So steam is a super powerful leavener. So it's actually gonna make these gluten forming proteins expand. And that's gonna form the structure of the Dutch baby. That's why it's gonna go real big, like a Dutch baby and a popover. And then it's actually gonna decrease and go down. But you're almost gonna see like a space, like a space inside a popover, there's like a little hole. You can almost live in there. It's like a, like an empty space. And that's because the egg proteins can handle the steam as it's actually helping it to rise so the egg proteins literally snap apart and create this hole inside. It's glorious, it's delicious. Let's move on. All right, so on my, in this sheet pan, in this uh, saucepan, it's not a sheet pan, it is a saucepan. Okay, let me move this over. All right, I have half a cup of granulated sugar in my saucepan and two and three quarter cups of rhubarb. I'm gonna put the rhubarb in with the sugar right now. That's raw rhubarb that I've cut into maybe half inch uh, thick slices and just chop it up. Rhubarb almost looks like a reddish looking celery. All right. And I'm gonna heat that up. I'm gonna get a spoon ready. So I have a half a cup of granulated sugar, two and three quarter cups of my rhubarb and I'm going to add two tablespoons of orange juice. It can be freshly squeezed. It can be the type you just buy in the grocery store. No big deal. And I'm going to stir it. So come on over and take a look. You gotta come on over and take a look at my saucepan. And I'm going to coat all that rhubarb. All right, and we're going to get this to the simmer. That's right below the boiling. And we really just want to Get these all coated with the sugar. Rhubarb will take a little bit longer to cook than our strawberries, so we're adding them first. And I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of lemon juice. I love that. If you prefer lime juice, you can add lime juice too. It just depends on what you like. And we're gonna let that go for a minute. You can turn up your, your temperature just to make sure that everything gets heated up. So you're gonna actually bring this almost to a boil and it's going to soften the rhubarb. Rhubarb you can actually roast in the oven and you can actually cook it on top of the stove. It's a super easy uh, fruit. It's actually, um, uh, it's, it's actually a very, very cool fruit to make, uh, both savory and sweet. So I told you my daughter's crazy about this, uh, this compote. And my grandmother used to make a compote like this when I was a little girl. And she would serve it, um, and, and you could just serve it with ice cream. Uh, over ice cream, you could serve it with yogurt, cottage cheese, granola, 
you can serve it with whatever you want. And I like to serve it with like roasted salmon sometimes, right? Savory. So there's a little sweet, a little savory. So you can see it's actually coming to a boil right now. All right, it's actually, I don't know if you can see the boiling, right? So that's going to take about two or three minutes and you're going to be patient and you're not going to walk away. You're not going to go and walk the dog. You're not going to answer the phone and have a huge conversation with your mother. You're going to watch this and it's going to be bubbly and the sugar will caramelize a little bit. All right. Oh, it smells so good. I can smell the lemon juice and the citrus from the orange as well. If you wanted to add the citrus um, zest, from your lemon, lemon and your orange, you can. Uh, my daughter likes it just like this. And once it starts softening and your rhubarb gets a little bit softer, you're gonna add two cups of cubed strawberries. And I'll show you what they look like in a second. So let this cook down for a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes, be patient. This is so worth doing, it's fabulous. Rhubarb isn't around all year. You can buy frozen rhubarb. And when I worked in a restaurant as a pastry chef, I used to ask um, the executive chef to buy me some frozen rhubarb because I loved making it in tarts, uh, turnovers, uh, and compost. It was just so good. So if it gets a little bit too, too much of a boil, turn it down a little bit. All right. And as it starts softening, you're going to see that you can actually take a spoon and, or you can actually use your Teflon fingers like I have. And you can actually try a piece and see if it is soft enough that you should add your strawberries. Remember, we don't want mush here. So we actually want the rhubarb to be sort of a little more than al dente. We want it to be a little bit soft. And we want to add the strawberries, which are going to break down so much faster. Uh, they have a lot more water in them than the rhubarb, although they're both fruits and they both have water. See how nice that looks? So I said a simmer. This is sort of a rolling boil because we are, we are doing this real time. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And you can see the steam going off. That's your water from your orange juice and your lemon juice and the water even from the rhubarb. So I might take a little piece and try it. The one thing you don't want to eat about rhubarb, you don't want to eat the, the leaves. The leaves are poisonous. So don't eat the leaves of the rhubarb. And very often, when you go to the grocery store, you can actually sometimes see a, a leaf or two on there. I'm going to try this. Take a look. It's very hot. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, we're going to add our strawberries now. Oh, it's so good. So. We like a little bit of sweet tart. So we have our two cups of our strawberries and this will cook down a bit. Now you can always adjust, and this is cooking super fast. So I am actually going to adjust my heat and you can also adjust the sweetness. If you feel like it's not sweet enough, add a little more sugar. If you wanted to add another type of sugar, uh, like brown sugar, or you want to add agave, or you're not into as much sugar and you want to add coconut sugar or, or something else that might be erythritol, which might be a sugar substitute if you have an issue with sugar or carbohydrates in general, go for it. So this only takes a few minutes. You do want it to reduce a little bit and the liquid will sort of not caramelize, if you will, like a caramel, but it will reduce. The water will reduce and it will thicken. Give it a few minutes. If you notice, it came together super fast. So it's boiling. I'm letting it go for a little bit just till the uh, strawberries sort of break down a bit. You don't want this to go to mush, all right? Nobody wants pablum. You really want a nice, beautiful, red, ruby red um, strawberry rhubarb compote. And this is what you want. This is not thick enough to put into a pie, so I would not use this for a pie. I think you'd need a thickening agent like cornstarch or flour or something to actually thicken it a little more. This would be a little bit too thin, but this is perfect as a dessert topping on a sponge cake, on a cupcake, on ice cream, on a sorbet. 
so delicious. You could even put a little schnapps in here or some form of alcohol, uh, like a Gewürztraminer, wine, or a little champagne, and, and put this over ice cream. So I think this is basically done. I'm just letting it stand here, um, and I'm actually going to just let it cool down. Now, when our Dutch baby comes out, it's going to be, you can't open your oven. So if you notice, I'm not going to my oven. I'm not checking my Dutch baby. I am not looking in my oven. My oven has 10 more minutes. We're gonna be patient, but do not look inside. Do not look inside the oven. This is a warning because steam leavened baked goods, they won't leaven if you look in the oven because you're gonna actually bring your oven temperature down. Don't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move this over. So once our Dutch baby comes out, we are going to put our cast iron pan here. It's gonna be bigger. It's gonna have puffed up, right? And then it's gonna sink. Don't get upset. We didn't mess up. You didn't mess up. It's supposed to do that. So once you actually have it, it will, it will literally sink down, cut it into wedges. I like to dust the top with powdered sugar cut it into wedges, and that's where the compote comes in. And you could serve the compote warm. I would let it get to room temperature uh, before, but what I'd like to do is, let me just wash my hands real quick. And this is a very easy thing to do. You don't wanna put baking powder or baking soda into your Dutch baby. It's not gonna make it go any faster. This is steam leaven. You've got to let the steam do its job, all right? So let me find something fun to serve this in, all right? Just so you can see. So let me pour this in here. And it's very hot now. And the rhubarb, you can see, has broken down quite a bit. The strawberries are soft and tender. Tender strawberries. Yum, and it smells so good. Again, adjust your sugar content if you really feel that it is not sweet enough. If it's too sweet and you really don't like it that sweet, you can actually add less. Rhubarb is very bitter, so if you've ever, you don't want to bite into it raw. It doesn't taste great raw, so. This will thicken as it cools. Again, it's not gonna be super, super thick. That's why I have a slotted spoon, all right? Yum. All right, so I'm gonna let that go. And then I am gonna grab a spoon just to adjust. I did try that little bit of rhubarb, but let me see how it is for sugar content. Oh, perfect. Oh, it's delicious. Reminds me of when I was little and my grandma made this. It's a lot of fun to make. All right, so I'm going to leave this here. I'm not looking in my oven. Don't get upset. I'm just going to go to my oven. Okay, walk with me to the oven. I want to turn the light on. If you don't have a light, don't look inside. I just want to see. Oh, can you see through there? Can you see it puffing up? Can you see it? It's puffing. We got puff. We go, and it will get brown. It will get really brown. So don't get upset. That's what it's supposed to do. And if you don't want to use butter on the bottom, remember there was a tablespoon in, of butter in that 10 inch cast iron pan. And I just left it in the oven for 10 minutes. So while we were mixing our batter, once you get that pan out of the oven, hot, you pour that batter in and just get it in there. All right, super simple. I'm, I want to open the oven. Okay, I really want to open it. Don't do it. I want to resist. Don't open the oven. So really make sure you don't because you'll ruin your Dutch baby. Now, I did some research on Dutch baby. So let me just, so Dutch baby is actually, it can be a German pancake um, and it's German based and it was made smaller years ago and called the Dutch baby because it was served in this famous restaurant in Seattle, Washington. You believe that? called Mankas, uh, and in the early 1900s, and they served you three little pancakes, right? We would not put up with that now, right? We like big, big portions. Um, and so three little pancakes was called the Dutch baby. And there's a lot of other 
lore about how it got its name. And it usually doesn't have anything else in it. It's usually served, believe it or not, with some powdered sugar and a squeeze of lemon juice. But you know what? Strawberry rhubarb compote. You can't go wrong with that, right? That is like perfect. So I prefer that. Again, um, I, it's very similar to a popover. Popover is more of a side bread, like a side dish to serve, not a side dish, but something to serve with dinner uh, or an appetizer. Uh, and just you rip it open and you can put slather it with butter. It's so good. Um, but popovers are sort of like a dinner roll in a way. Um, and they're a quick bread. They can be served for breakfast and they're individual. And a popover pan is very similar to a muffin pan. Uh, only the popover pan has a little bit more space in between each um, muffin t uh, pan itself, each muffin indentation. If you don't have a popover pan, but you'd like me to make popovers to see what they're like, I will gladly do that, let me know. Um, but what you can do is you can actually make the popovers in every other hole, every other muffin tin, so that you do have enough room. Because once it puffs up, it puffs up and expands. They get very dark. So when you see our Dutch baby, it's gonna get very dark brown. It's supposed to be nice and dark brown, all right? So just remember, you didn't mess up. That's what it's supposed to look like. So Dutch babies are, are um, just, they've been, they've been around for years and years and years, obviously, from, you know, like the early 1900s, super long time. All right, three minutes. Three minutes. I'm going back to my oven. I can't hold it. I can't hold it. I'm obsessed. All right. I'm, gonna, I'm not opening it. Don't worry. I'm just going to look inside. Okay. All right. It got, got a little bit bigger. Now it may be a little asymmetrical. Don't, you know, get excited that you messed up. Sometimes they'll puff up all at once. It depends on how, when I pour it in the pan or when you pour it in the pan, it just depends on how it hits. So we have three minutes. All right, it did puff up. It's gonna go down a little bit and it's, and it's brown. Um, and we'll see what it looks like. I don't know, we'll see what it looks like. They come out different every single time. All right, three minutes, three minutes, 375. Now I have to tell you something, when you make a popover, you actually bake them at higher, like 425 and then you can lower the temperature. But they start out really high. The reason is steam. What is water boil? What's the temperature that water boils at? 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So you gotta reach at least that for the water-based ingredients to really push up on that batter and actually force it up, okay? Two minutes and counting. I know this is like, the weight game is like really, really hard, but I had to do this in real time because a Dutch baby only, only can be made like this. You can't make it any other way. It's puffing. All right. It's not huge. It's not like huge. It depends. Um, this time it's not huge, but you can see the edges puff up and it almost looks like a crater in the middle. And then again, it will fall. So that is what it's supposed to do. We're going to blast it with powdered sugar and we're going to serve it with our strawberry rhubarb compote. And if you like Anything else you can serve it. You can serve it with jams and jellies. That's also traditional. Um, and some people do that little squeeze of lemon juice, which uh, that's probably not the way I prefer it. You can even serve it with maple syrup like you would a pancake. Um, this would be a great brunch, breakfast, breakfast for dinner. We've done that. 33 seconds. 33 seconds. I'm, got, I'm coming. 33 seconds. Then we're going to blast this with a little powdered sugar. All right, 25, 24, 23, we're counting back. All right, almost, almost. I'll let you know when we're at 10 seconds, we're almost there. We're gonna pull it out of the oven. All right, all right, here we go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. All right, let's see. Oh, wow. It looks like a science experiment. Holy moly. Look at that. We got lots of, lots of 
It looks like a face. <laughs> it looks like a nose. All right, let's put it on our hot plate. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my goodness. That's exactly what they're supposed to look like. Now, what, look what I'm doing. I'm gonna take my tiny little sieve of confectioner sugar, and I'm just gonna, it does look like a face with a nose, doesn't it? I'm just gonna put a little sugar around there. Ooh, so good. And then when you cut it up, you're gonna cut it into wedges if you wanna share. <laughs> Who says you wanna share? This should feed about four people, cut it into uh, quarters. So you got a little bit of butter around there. So, so delicious. Serve it with a dollop or a couple spoonfuls of your strawberry rhubarb compote. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been so much fun. And I love waiting for Dutch babies, but I'm a little impatient. So please become a subscriber because I got many more videos to see. Take care.